low YouTube. All right, I've finished and it's time for some glamor shots here. I just put on the last piece, which was this power supply holder. I have not finally mounted the wiring yet. I'm about to do that, but I wanted to uh, kind of show it off a little bit. That uh, was the original part, um, but because I'm using a different power supply, of course, I had to go inside of Tinkercad, and uh, it took me a few hours to modify everything, uh, but I got it, and it fits, and it's pretty rigid. Um, so I gotta say, this is quite a fun project. I mean, total cost came in a little bit less than what you would buy a kit for the Mark III S, I guess is what they're currently selling. Um, well, I guess, it, what is it, a kit? Like seven fifty, and then $50 shipping. So I think I came in just under $700. Um, but I learned a ton and uh, I tell you, when you look at every part on this thing, it almost tells a little story of, um, you know, what I had to do to do some problem solving. There's tons of uh, details with, uh, and just take the heated bed, for example, and getting the right kinds of screws to fit, um, getting it properly spaced. I started out trying to make that uh, the part that rides on the linear bearings for the Y-axis and supports the heated bed. A lot of people call it the uh, squished frog. Tried to make it out of wood and uh, it didn't really turn out very well. Um, here's another, um, so I had to order it out of aluminum. Here's another um, little, uh, fix, uh, started out with, uh, these kinds of, uh, sensors, the red circuit board with the switch on it worked great for the Y axis after printing the specially designed Y axis part from Tom's 3d, um, Tom's dolly clone where he made one. Um, and I was able to screw that sensor in and no problems. And I tried to do the same thing here, but then uh, the um, extruder carriage could not come over far enough on the x-axis for the Pinda sensor to read these spots on the left side on the heated bed. Um, and so I couldn't get through the XYZ calibration in the Prusa firmware. And so what I had to do is I removed the actual switch from the sensor board and soldered up a little harness. I epoxied the switch onto the bottom of that uh, X motor mount um, so that uh, the existing uh, tab on the extruder could hit it. Although, um, if I do this again, I will mount the switch a little further in this direction so I don't need to put a little 3M adhesive pad spacer. And that's that actually worked so well, I just left it on there. I was gonna print a little shim and epoxy it to that tab, but that has been problem free, knock on wood. So uh, so I haven't messed with it. Um, what else to report? The, uh, the LED for the heated bed, that was a little discovery. Um, I still need to add the details to that in the comments in case anyone wants to build one. Um, the mount for the LCD, I had to notch out a section with the Dremel tool so that the uh, potentiometer that comes on this circuit board will fit in there with no problems. But once that's done, it's a great fit. Um, what else? Here's the, uh, the screw that goes through the frame that mounts into the power supply. That was a really neat um, project. Gosh, what else? Um, so filament goes in this uh, heated bed wiring cover and then runs around and mounts into, this is a Mark II S uh, Rambo box and the filament mounts in here and then you can sort of route your wires to it and it holds them. Perfect, I held off on the Rambo box. You know, you saw in the video, I had the little stubbed out metal bracket 
I should have done this um, straight away. Oh my gosh, here's another filament that mounts in the Rambo box and mounts in the uh, X carriage. And it works great. The wires never ever rub into each other. They never catch on anything. Just perfect. Uh, let's see, my little um, spacer that I had to supply along with this design on Thingiverse. Um, so I could raise the power supply up high enough that it wouldn't come into contact with any of the screws coming through from the bottom of this Z motor. You can just barely see, I don't know if I can get the camera in there enough, but it does not interfere at all. So that's kind of nice. Um, okay, the door for the Rambo cover I had to trim these nuts a little on an angle so that the X carriage won't hit them all the way. Um, now it has enough clearance for this to hit the, uh, the uh, sensor stop without interfering with these nuts. Um, and what I may do is I may switch these out to some, uh, I think they're called blind nuts. Um, basically you drill the hole on this side just a little bit bigger and you fit this threaded collar with like a, almost like a made on washer um, so it sits almost but not quite flush to this side but then it has some threads to catch and that would be a little bit of a cleaner look um, so maybe i'll do that but um, for now it's working fine so i don't really have any need to do it um, uh, here's another one uh, the springs i still have the ballpoint pen springs in there um, so far so good. It doesn't really have any problems unless I had to do a cold pull um, uh, with the hot end. Uh, I guess I got a little bit of something stuck in there and it was making this gear click where the stepper didn't seem to have enough power to push stuff through and I thought it was the springs but then the springs um, weren't really holding too tight. In fact, at one point um, Oh yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Um, at some point, one of the wires to the stepper motor, I guess, got, um, I put the zip tie on too tight and uh, it was clicking. And then I opened the door and took the filament out and tried to run the extruder with the hot end heated up. And the motor couldn't even turn with no load on it. And so I knew I had a problem and it turned out it was the wire. So I fixed that. Um, the plywood frame seems plenty strong. I mean, I've seen some real Prusas now and they look very nice with their aluminum um, or whatever kind of metal they use frame. Um, but I don't know that um, it would be any more rigid than this. I mean, in this direction, uh, the only thing that's moving is I put some rubber feet on the bottom of my uh, Y of rod holders. Um, and so they give just a little bit, but uh, this does not really deflect in any uh, at all, side to side and very little front to back. I mean, if you really reefed on it, you could probably move it, but um, I'm certain that it would be that way with the, uh, with the real one too. Um, so anyways, if anyone wants to build one of these from scratch, I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun um, doing the little bit of engineering needed to get the, uh, the parts that I could get my hands on without being able to get official parts um, working so that it was authentic and it runs the real firmware, which um, I think running the real firmware is not just a, you know, like a vanity thing. Um, I believe all the built-in tuning and stuff saved me from probably just as many hours that it took to build this thing um, in troubleshooting all of the fine tuning and settings of everything. And so I could not be happier with how this came out. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'll wrap it up, but uh, thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.